This next presentation is on second degree AV block type 1, also known as Winky Bach, and this is located on page 67 of your uh, Dysrhythmia Interpretation Workbook. And in a Winky Bach, um, the heart rate is typically slow to normal. Uh, P waves are usually upright and leads 1, 2, and 3. And in Winky Bach, what we see are drop beats or P waves that stand alone. So here, for example, we see a P wave with a QRS, P wave with a QRS, P wave with a QRS. And here we have this P wave that stands alone. There's no QRS following it, and then the, another P wave and QRS, and so on and so forth. So uh, the other key finding in a Winky Bach is that the peer interval becomes increasingly prolonged until a beat is dropped. This is the most common type of uh, Winky Bach or secondary AV block type 1. Now th the key here to interpretation is that the PR interval before the drop beat will be longer than the one after the drop beat. So we, if we look at it in more close detail, we'll do this on the next slide um, again. But, so here we have this P wave that stands alone. Look at the PR interval before it. It's prolonged compared to the one after it. Uh, and I'll explain why that happens in, uh, in the next slide. So uh, the QRS is usually narrow, less than 0.12 second. The ratio is 1 to 1 in the underlying rhythm, and then 2 to 1, of course, where there's a drop beat. And the rhythm is typically irregular. Now, one of the things I should mention about this particular uh, rhythm is that um, we don't often see, uh, here we have a drop beat, and here we have another drop beat. You don't typically see uh, two drop beats in a strip, this ECG strip, this short. More typically, what you see is three, four, five minutes of ECG, and then you see a drop beat, and then three, four, five minutes of ECG again before you see a drop beat. This rhythm was created by a rhythm generator, and that's why we see uh, a couple of drop beats here in a row. So the more classic second degree of your block type one or Winky Bach is one where it's quite a long time before you see a drop beat. So the key here um, is when you see this drop beat, as, as I mentioned, Look for the PR interval before it. It'll be long compared to the one after it. And the reason that happens, quite simply, is that um, the PR interval is, is getting subtly longer and longer. And then we have this P wave that doesn't get through the, the, the AV node. Um, so at, at the point where this next P wave comes along, the AV node has had a long time to recover. So it's no, no longer refractory, hence the, the short PR interval here. Uh, compared to the one before the drop beat. So that's why we see that. So again, the key to, uh, here is to look for uh, the P wave that stands alone. Look at the PR interval before it. It should be long compared to the PR interval of the P wave after it. That's a Winky Bach. Now, clinically, Winky Bach is generally not a rhythm that we treat. Typically, the heart rates are you know normal or maybe slightly bradycardic, but not really particularly worrisome. You know, if the, if the patient's in a sinus rhythm and then they convert to a winky bach before you rise again, you know, any sudden change in the rhythm is is concerning and alarming. We should, uh, you know, make a note of that. And you know, if you're a paramedic in the emergency department waiting to offload your patient, you should notify a triage about that that change. But otherwise, winky bach is fairly benign. Where I've sometimes seen winky bach as well is in head injured patients. And uh, I was speaking to a nurse surgeon about this, and he explained to me that he believed that um, Winky Bach is sometimes seen in a head injury because with a, a brain injury, we sometimes see fluctuations uh, between sympathetic and parasympathetic, uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic tone, and, and that might um, be the result, uh, may result in that kind of uh, dysrhythmia.